do not vote for any candidate that will vote for the renewal of Trident. Let us make sure that we send a progressive alliance of anti-Trident MPs to the House of Commons to say no to Trident once and for all. Thank you very much. Glasgow's George Square prepares to host a mass of protesters. They are here for the Scrap Trident rally, intending to be heard. Since the independence referendum, people have become more switched on about Scottish politics. People were here from as early as 8 in the morning to express their passion for this now very topical issue. I'm expecting us to, to come together as, one, as a group of, 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 of different people from different aspects of Scottish life with one common theme, which is we, we don't want uh, the nuclear weapons situation, not just in our country, but all around the world. So we want to take a proactive role in saying we as a country, as a nation in Scotland, don't want these weapons of mass destruction. I, I, I don't believe that these weapons are, are deterrent. These weapons are an offensive type of weapon system. Um, they're not designed to protect people, they're designed to, to take out um, countries, uh, military installations at first strike. Um, so when people say there are um, you know, a way of, of protecting ourselves and having a sleep at night, it's not, it's not the case. The crowd came from all over the country to show their support. Protesters of all ages took a stand against Trident and packed themselves into George Square. This helped create one of the largest rallies Glasgow has ever seen. Right, hi everybody, we're going to be marching off in 10 minutes time. We'll be leaving from my right, your left of the stage. There's, looks just from here, you probably can't see it from where you're standing, but the sea of placards is just amazing. So, great. March, traffic was stopped completely, with police presence at a minimum. It takes a lot to slow down Glasgow, but these protesters managed it peacefully. Now to introduce the first speaker, uh, Patrick Harvey, MSP for the Green Party. And if you've, been, if you've never been to Paz Lane yourself, if you've never been to where this evil system of mass destruction is based, if you've never come to join us at a blockade, come over to that stall over there and find out more about the blockade on the 13th of April. Make this moment, if you've never been to a blockade before, take this moment to decide now's the time that you're going to join the blockade on the 13th. I'll be there. I hope to see all of you and many more there as well. We've seen many, many demonstrations against Trident in George Square over years and decades. But this is one of the biggest, and uh, I think it's clear that people see an e a sense of expectation that this is uh, a moment when we can finally win the argument. The next UK Parliament will make a final decision on whether to renew Trident. And we see a sense of opportunity to get far more people involved in the campaign to oppose that decision than ever before. It is well known that the Labour Party line is to fully support Trident. Katie Clark, the Labour MP for North Ayrshire and Arran, spoke out to share her controversial stand against Trident. Let's make sure that we build the alliances that we need to rid this country of nuclear weapons, to rid Europe of nuclear weapons, to rid the world of nuclear weapons. And let's start by dismantling of those nuclear warheads that are part of the Trident system. Thank you. Well, I'm here because
because I'm against Trident. I've been against Trident for a long, long time. And I was here as the Labour representative on this demonstration. I was here as someone who's been involved in campaigning against Trident and indeed has voted as tried against Trident as a member of Parliament. When the main votes took place in 2007 on Trident, 101 Labour MPs voted against Trident. Now that shows you the strength of view amongst many people in the Labour Party um, on this issue. There's obviously a debate taking place. Um, there's people that are very much in favour of Trident within my party, people that are very much against it, and the official position um, is, you know, we'll review it, but the, the, the broad position is, is supportive. I don't personally agree with that, and I've made my position very clear. And I think my constituents know it. <laughs> I think it was a great turnout. There's lots of people here. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's energised the, the debate about whether we should have nuclear weapons in this country or not. As today's Scrap Trident rally comes to a close, protesters leave feeling inspired and ready for the blockade at Fastlane on April 13. On the morning of Monday, April 13, many Scrap Trident protesters made their way to the Navy base at Fastlane, Scotland's nuclear deterrent. They arrived as early as 6am, from which many came on the buses supplied from all over Scotland. Many aim of peaceful protest, whereas others came with much more extreme intentions. Uh, I sat in the rally in George Square last week, uh, and you were talking about the blockade coming on Monday, and I, I don't know if this does anything or not, but I do know that staying at home doesn't do anything, so I figured I might as well. I imagine I'll get arrested, probably sit down for a little bit, then be arrested. I, I guess that's how it goes, but I don't really know. Let's see what happens. On arrival at the base, protesters at the North Gate had sole intentions of displaying a calm and peaceful presence. They welcomed families and those looking to maintain a respectful protest, with complimentary snacks to keep morale high. Hi, it's quite good man, everybody's quite happy and uh place seemed brand new and folk are eating at cups of tea and everybody's sharing their sweeties and uh, talking to some right, right gems. I've been into this sort of movement for a few years but never, never participated in such sort of thing, never came in it. But I definitely come back, man. I'm just hoping that I see some more folk. Folk are starting to sing in that new, but hopefully see some more of that. Just a few miles down the road at the south gate, there was a dramatic change of atmosphere. Protesters took a more drastic approach when showing their support. blockade is to shut down the base and that is generally an arrestable offence to block um, access to the base and, and failure to move when asked to. So everyone's received a warning from the police and being told if they don't remove the blockade they will be arrested Then they're placed under arrest. Most people here have put their arms inside what we call lock-on tubes mm -hmm. um, and that's basically to delay the arrest so a special cutting team has to come and cut you out of those um, and it's breach of the peace basically which is what you would still get if you were just sitting on the road and um, so there's no extra charge for using a lock-on but it maintains the blockade for much longer. Yeah, I lived at a peace camp for three years so I've done quite a few arrestable actions here and um, the big blockades are a new thing that um, is, is being regenerated. The last one was two years ago but before that it was ten years um, so this is the thing that we're trying to get started again and we're hoping it'll gain momentum, um, particularly this year uh, before the decision to replace Trident is taken. Many protesters had to be cut free. Some had filled their lock-on arms with springs and nails to prolong their inevitable arrest. For the safety of themselves and the protesters, the police took extreme caution during this process. 
If you if you do get arrested, the police generally tend to be very calm, respectful. Uh, the the attitudes that they know they'll expect from the protesters is one of, of calm respect as well. Um, I think very often we get the feeling that a lot of the a lot of the folk who work at the base, a lot of the folk who police the base, uh, don't necessarily support the policy of, of Trident and understand that the, the protest is important and it's something that a great many of them have a, a, a sincere respect for. They're doing their job and we're doing ours. If anyone hasn't yet decided how they feel uh, about the prospect of uh, the UK buying another generation of weapons of mass destruction, take a piece of paper and a pen and start listing the things that your country needs to invest in. The housing that we need, the, the good quality affordable housing that this country needs, the transition toward a, a renewable energy system that the country needs, <laughs> investing in the skills, the, the jobs of the future, uh, the public services that people depend on every day of our lives, the infrastructure that the country has. Uh, think about the, the, the kind of socially useful investments uh, that are necessary to build a, an economy that actually functions uh, in the public good. Now compare that with one nuclear weapon system here which is not only immoral but illegal. It can't discriminate between civilian and military targets. Uh, and beyond being wrong, it's strategically useless. Uh, it's not relevant to the, to the threats of the, the modern age. Uh, the things which genuinely threaten our security and peace in the future uh, are around global economic injustice, around access to land, water, food, energy, uh, the impacts that climate change will have on those, uh, as well as more modern threats like terrorism and cyber security. Nuclear weapons are not relevant to, to the modern age. Uh, there is growing momentum for a, a global ban on nuclear weapons. This country should be throwing its weight behind that momentum uh, and contributing to the case for a global ban. If we buy another generation of nuclear weapons, we'll be undermining that case uh, and we'll be giving an incentive to other countries, including some of the more dangerous countries in the world. They will end up feeling that if we've got them, they need to have them as well. If we want a more peaceful and more secure world, that is not the way to go. We should be disarming Triton, not buying a replacement, and investing instead in the more peaceful and just future that we should be proud to hand over to the next generation.